After the aid and the training, the festivals and the markets, I will be the evil businesswoman. Um, and I will be focusing on uh, TV distribution uh, of mainly uh, TV programs and um, uh, animated series and uh, feature films. So who are we? Super Rights is uh, a worldwide distribution company uh, created uh, uh, three, uh, almost three years ago. Uh, we focus on programming for uh, kids and family. Uh, we offer a tailor-made service to the producers we work with. Um, one of our uh, specialty is to get involved at the very early stage of the project uh, when it's only uh, a pitch uh, or a little bit more developed than that. Um, to help the producers uh, gather their, um, their financing. Uh, basically, we're here to, to, put, to bring money on the table to make the, the project um, uh, viable. Uh, and we are also a, an IP management company, which means uh, we can uh, take care on uh, um, an intellectual property, for instance, a book or a toy or a plush, and make it live outside of uh, its original uh, format, uh, which most of the time means uh, adapting the, the, the thing, whether it's a, it's a book or a plush, into um, TV series. So the team, I'm gonna be very quick on that. Uh, the company was created under the, um, uh, the impulsion of two producers who had spent almost 20 years at a company called Alphanim. When they sold Alphanim uh, to Gaumont, they decided to uh, become free again because they didn't want to stick to uh, a major uh, group uh, with only one thing they were asked to do, which was uh, animated uh, series. Um, and they wanted to expand their, their activities. So that's when they became independent and started their own production company. And after a couple of years, they decided that, um, uh, you know, they would like to have somebody in-house uh, to sell what they, uh, they had been producing. So that's when they called me. Um, at that time, I was um, the head of um, children's programs at uh, M6, which is a terrestrial channel in France. And I am not saying that I was getting a little bit bored, but uh, uh, I had been on the broadcaster side for almost 10 years, uh, both at M6 and uh, at Disney previously, and I thought that uh, it was time for a change, and going back to uh, distribution was uh, quite a good idea at that moment, uh, because I wanted to be back on the market with uh, something a little bit more uh, probably energetic. I shouldn't say that too in front of uh, other broadcasters, but there are not that many here, so that's fine. Um, so what is the process of uh, worldwide distribution? The very first thing you have to do is to acquire a program, whether it's a, a series, a special, uh, a mini-series, a feature film, and so on. Uh, what is to acquire a program? I'll get into uh, details later. Uh, but basically, it's to, to take on the rights to go and sell it. Um, a few years ago, not that long ago, it was quite a simple process. You would have your program becoming available, sell it to cable or satellite first. They would have an exclusivity period of six months, and then you would sell it to uh, uh, the terrestrial broadcaster in each territory. Well, that was not that long ago, but it's no longer what, uh, what happens. And today, with all the new media, the new platforms, uh, the new God, which is Netflix, uh, Hulu, and all the others, it's become uh, very different. And there is no more one scenario, but uh, every, uh, every deal 
is an exception. So when you sell the program, you get paid, of course, at the ID. Otherwise, you change, uh, you do another, uh, another business. Um, and as a, a distributor, you keep a commission. That's what uh, your business is about, to get a commission for the sale you've made. Uh, you recoup uh, the, the minimum guarantee and the expenses uh, you've put on the table in the first hand. So now I'm saying, I'm, I'm quite convinced that I'm losing you and you have no idea of what I'm talking about. So um, I'll, I'll be short, but I'll explain to you what it is. Uh, a minimum guarantee is uh, a certain amount of money you give to the producer before the program is uh, ready, completed, delivered, uh, to first uh, participate in uh, the, the, the financing of the project. Second, it expresses how you believe in the project. Um, and it's, it's both a financial and a, a moral uh, help. Uh, but it's, it's some kind of advance, and uh, the idea is to get that money back once you've started to, uh, to sell the program around. So you give that money up front, and when the program is ready uh, a few, hopefully months or years later, uh, you first uh, get back the money you, you have put in on the table in the first place, plus all the expenses uh, you've done, like uh, creating flyers, uh, investing in registering the project in, uh, in video library or in, uh, in markets such as uh, MIPCOM Junior or all these kind of, uh, of expenses. And once you've, get, you've got all that money back, you give what, uh, everything that's left uh, back to the producer. So that's the overall project. Uh, what is an acquisition process? Uh, because of course, uh, at the end of the day, what makes the difference uh, between all the distributors is their catalog. And to create a catalog, you have to uh, get on new things, uh, approximately five projects a year is the ideal scenario. Um, it can be more, most of the time it's less. Um, and uh, so how to acquire a new program? Um, the idea is to be uh, connected to the international market all the time. Uh, being connected, it goes through different uh, processes. I'll go through that later, but uh, just be aware of what's going on, what's being produced, uh, what's the trend uh, in the US, in Canada, in Asia, in Mongolia, why not, in Africa. Uh, just know what, uh, what's being done uh, elsewhere. Uh, don't stick to, to home, don't stick to your local uh, market because although you're probably the most important person on earth, it's not enough to have a business around it. So just keep focused that uh, uh, there is something else elsewhere and you have to know what, uh, what that else is. So when you're connected with uh, the international market, you will see that there are a lot of things out there. Um, a lot of things being produced, a lot of things in development, a lot of new ideas, concepts, and so on. Uh, you have to identify the project that may be in coherence with your catalog or your editorial line or what you're looking for at that uh, very specific moment. When you, identif you have identified that project, you will analyze its potential. Uh, that goes through a very easy process, which is reading the Bible, the script, the pitches, the synopsis, anything that the, the author or the producer will be able to provide you with. Um, it's also analyzing all the graphics. Uh, and once you've, you have 
all these elements in hand, um, you do your forecast. Uh, this is not a bad word, it just, uh, you take the, the map of the world and you, uh, you try and find out um, where you'll be able to sell that project. Uh, because all projects don't travel the same way. A uh, stupid thing, for instance, but uh, uh, I was the, the one who sold Peppa Pig in, in the first place in France. Uh, that was hmm, a few years ago. Um, and you know Peppa Pig is huge everywhere, except in one region, Middle East, because you will never sell a project where there is a pig in Middle East. Uh, so that, if I had today to do projections for Peppa Pig, I would put a cross on Middle East. So you do that exercise for all the regions, uh, all continents, all countries, from the minor to the bigger, and you'll get some figures. And based on that figures, you decide if it's worth uh, taking that, uh, that project, uh, integrating that project in your catalog or not. And then you go and uh, talk uh, figures with, uh, with the producers uh, and you define uh, uh, how much money you would uh, put on the table as a minimum guarantee if you decide to put uh, that advance uh, on the, on the table, you will uh, decide what your commission will be. Uh, if you put money on the table, it means that you take a risk, a financial risk, so your commission will be higher. Um, usually it's between 30 and 35%. If you don't put a minimum guarantee, your commission will be lower, which makes sense. So between uh, 20 and 25%. Uh, you also decide on how long uh, you will be taking care of the program. Uh, the cycle of sales are, uh, are quite long in terms of animation. So uh, you may want to take the rights for 12 or 15 years, the producer will tell you, no, that's too long, what if I'm not happy with what you do and I want to change, so you, I just want to give it to you for seven years, blah, blah, blah. So it's the kind of negotiation where at the end of the day everyone makes an effort and uh, you end up with a, with a, a contract for, uh, for 10 years. Uh, you decide of uh, your, uh, how uh, your implication has to be. Uh, will you approve uh, all the scripts? Uh, will you approve the, the voices when it comes to dubbing into English? Uh, I mean, every little thing can be a, a source of a negotiation. But ultimately, you sign the contract. Uh, so why focusing on kids and family content? Uh, that was our position because we felt that um, uh, it's a, a market where you have, I don't know, many distributors, maybe Yolanda would have a better uh, figure than me, but uh, there are a lot of companies out there. Uh, the big ones, uh, very often affiliated to networks or major companies. Uh, the medium ones, uh, and a ton of uh, in small independent ones. Um, so the more um, uh, specialist you are, the better it is uh, to get a credibility and to be uh, to have a very strong and clear uh, positioning. Uh, and kids and family offer uh, several advantages. The programs are not violent, uh, trustful they travel very well on the international market. And very importantly for, for when you're the seller, uh, there is very little piracy. Parents still tend to, to buy DVDs and not uh, download them from, uh, I don't know which platforms. Uh, 
uh, you have many dedicated channels, uh, whether they are historical, uh, like uh, uh, Televisión Española or TV3 Catalunya, uh, or dedicated like uh, Disney, Nickelodeon, and so on. So that means you have a lot of possibilities to place your programs. And what's applicable to Spain is applicable to almost all countries, except maybe Africa that is developing so slowly but surely. Uh, but in every individual country uh, of, the, of the globe, you have uh, dedicated channels for kids. Uh, they are dynamic markets. Uh, what do I mean by that? It's quite simple. When you have a crisis in um, Latin America, uh, Asia will be going very well. If there is a crisis in Japan, it will be compensated by Singapore or Scandinavia, and so on and so on. I mean, each time there is a crisis somewhere, there is a vital market somewhere else that will compensate uh, your, um, your, your business. As I was saying, uh, the two major uh, advantages of uh, animated programs, they have a long-term value and it can be a profitable activity. Uh, long-term value because uh, you can have three or four and sometimes more when you look at the Scooby-Doo's or Pig Panther, for instance. You, have, uh, you can have a lot of uh, cycles. Uh, cycles uh, can be between four and seven uh, years of, of sales. Um, if you have a program that was smartly uh, thought, smartly produced, with good stories, don't forget that stories is what makes your program important in the very first place. That what, that's exactly why you would make a difference because your story has something different. Whether it's the arc, uh, the, the basic concept, uh, or the tone you give, uh, you give it to, the story is primary. And uh, profitable activity, well, if uh, you're the lucky creator of Peppa Pig, for instance, and if you decide to make a program a little bit uh, different um, from anything else on, on the market at that time, if it happened that the program is well received uh, everywhere in the world except Middle East, well, you may think about uh, doing some T-shirts and plushes and pens and all these kind of things that can make of you a billionaire. That's one out of uh, 100 or 200 uh, uh, property, but that can still happen. Uh, so this is an example, uh, a short presentation of all the series we have in, uh, in catalog uh, for preschoolers, for the very little. And this is what we have for an older audience. So, how do you build that catalog? Uh, business is intelligence. Uh, that is related to what I was calling uh, being connected with the international market. So, uh, read the press, whether it's uh, on real paper uh, or on, uh, on the internet. And networking, that's key. Keep in touch with uh, if you're all students now, uh, you know, your, your best buddy this, uh, this year can be uh, the next new uh, uh, Steven Spielberg. Uh, so it's better, you know, if, you're, if you know that guy and if you can have access to that guy. I'm not talking about doing something um, on purpose. I'm just saying that... Uh, uh, networking, talking to people, uh, be sensitive about what, uh, what they do, uh, be aware of, of what's happening on the market. That's key and that will definitely help you. Again, don't stick to, to local market, don't focus on your home. Think wide, think abroad, think uh, about the, the others, about your neighbors and uh, 
and all that. You will always learn something that can be of, uh, of uh, help at some point. Um, a diversified catalog, uh, that means covering all genres, whether it's 2D, CGI, stop motion, and so on, and uh, having programs for all targets, uh, whether it's young preschoolers, uh, which is again, kids from two to four, upper preschoolers for kids from uh, four to six, or older kids, or uh, twins, or teens, and so on try and get uh, the most diversified catalog possible so that when you have a meeting with a client, you will always have something to pitch him. Meeting the clients. Um, with networking, it's uh, another key point. See them, go and visit them, see them on markets, on festivals, on pitch sessions, on any, any opportunity you can have. Uh, be there, where, be where they are, um, and get connected to them. And um, on top of, uh, I, know, I'm, I think I'm, I'm, I have something like uh, uh, 12 markets I attend a year between MIP TV, MIPCOM, the cartoons, um, uh, and see and, and so on. On top of that, it's very important to go and visit the broadcasters. Uh, not only uh, they like that, uh, but because they like that, they will take the time for you. On trade shows, on a, a market like MIP TV, for instance, you the only thing you will have from, from him on paper is 30 minutes. Uh, because a MIP TV is for three or four days of appointments every 30 minutes from nine in the morning until seven at nine. Um, in English, in Spanish, in French, I'll let you imagine how you feel at the end of the day. Um, so you'll have uh, 30 minutes uh, with, with a client where we, you will have to introduce your catalog, pitch them several uh, series, hopefully talking uh, uh, start date and delivery and uh, fee and how much they uh, for how long they would take the program, how much they would pay for it, blah, blah, blah. That's quite short. When you go and visit them, they will take the time for you because you've traveled uh, a long way to go and see them, so they will be polite enough to welcome you, sometimes even to take you out for lunch, and you will have between one hour and two hours to spend uh, with that person in a privileged atmosphere take that opportunity to not only talk business like hard, but to create a link, because that link will make him go and, and say yes to another meeting two months after, uh, because you have that connection. Because don't forget that the, the buyers, the broadcasters are probably uh, the persons that are uh, that receive the most invitations uh, when it comes to a market or a festival. So you have to make the difference. You have to be the one they will accept to to spend time with. Marketing. Uh, not only try and have a, a marketing strategy, whether it's uh, online. Uh, in the press, uh, on Facebook, or so on, but don't don't invest money in marketing at any price. Get what I call a relevant marketing strategy, which means sometimes you may have only one penny. Invest that penny on the right project. Um, a stupid example: if you have only one penny, don't put it on the, pro the project that is at the very early stage. You'd rather put that penny on the one that is about to be completed, about to be ready, because that's the one that will be profitable the fastest. Social media. You know them all, Twitter, uh, Facebook, more and more Instagram. 
get there, LinkedIn and uh, others, try and get a different message for all of them. On Facebook, you will be more friendly, you will put funny pictures. On LinkedIn, it will be more serious, more business oriented. So try and get a different message for every support and make it coherent because that would help you having a, a, a global uh, good image. So do and don't. Do make your client talk. That's uh, the very first thing to do when you have a meeting uh, with uh, a potential uh, broadcasters or client, generally speaking. Do make them talk about their needs, about what they look for, about what their editorial line is, about their strategy of the, of the channel, uh, about what's working uh, on their kids' blog. Uh, I often ask, why, what is your top three in terms of uh, ratings? Uh, because that instantaneously gives me an idea uh, of what they may be looking for. Uh, so make them talk. Not only they, they like that, uh, but you learn a lot and you will uh, if you listen to their answers, you will adapt your, uh, your, your, your strategy. Don't presume. Uh, don't presume of what they're going to say. If you're going to TF1, for instance, which is the number one commercial uh, channel in, in France, uh, don't presume that the only uh, program they may be interested in is the merchandising and licensing uh, new plush and uh, that they want to do an adaptation of that. Uh, you could be surprised because they may not only be interested in adaptations of very famous brands you know, but they are revivals or these kind of things but they may also be ready to invest in a stunning out of the ordinary uh, new concept and that may be yours. So don't presume but make them talk. So adapt your offer based on their needs and on everything that they've just told you. They've just spent 30 minutes telling you what's working, what's not working, if their baby is growing right or whatever. Be ready to hear anything but listen carefully and adapt your, your own speech accordingly. And adapt, but don't waste their time. You have to be ready to waste yours many times. There are many, many moments where, you know, you'll be there and you'll be wondering why you're there and why you have to listen to that uh, buyer who's, I don't know, having a, a twin going through a, a crisis, blah, blah, blah. Never complain and never show you're, you're fed up. If uh, she feels comfortable with you enough to share that uh, confidence, it means that you have the link. You have created that connection. So that's important to, to keep. And she had the right, because she is the client, she had the right to waste your time but you can't waste hers. Um, very often when I'm on a, on a trade show and I'm in a meeting and I've made the client talk and I know exactly what she's looking for and if I have a look at my catalog, I realize that I have nothing that could fit. So then my reaction would be not to pitch her things that she won't give a damn about, that she doesn't want to listen to, I will just tell her, well, you know what? Lucky you, you just have a, an extra time. You have 15 minutes, you can go and get a coffee or go to the bathroom or sit, keep, keep sitting here with me and we can have a nice uh, chat about what you, you've seen at the theater lately or whatever. But you have 15 minutes uh, available. Use it uh, the way you want, but make sure that next time uh, you'll come back to visit me because you know that I won't make your, your, your I, w I won't waste your time. And again, when you're uh, at a MIP TV or MIPCOM, when you have a, 25 meetings a day, believe me, 
the broadcaster who's offered 15 minute break loves it. And he will remember that. And he will come back to you next time you ask for a meeting because he knows that you won't bullshit him. You won't uh, keep him on the stand just because it's great to have a TF1 or TV3 or uh, I don't know what on, uh, on the stand. You know that you, you'll be respectful of uh, his time. See the line between insisting and being a bully. Uh, that means that you will often, very often, hear what you don't want to hear, but which is two letters, no. Don't get um, upset. Don't get demotivated because things change. What's no today may become a yes uh, the day after. Never forget that. And if it's not a yes from that person, it may be a yes from uh, the competition. So never, um, don't, yeah, that's what I mean by don't take no for a definite answer. It may be a no for that particular moment, but keep in mind that it's a long cycle. Maybe you've had, the, you, you've had a sign for, for 15 years with the program. So in 15 years, you'll definitely have a yes at some point. Don't get demotivated. Be aware of the cultural and business practice differences. Um, you and I are what we are called Mediterranean. Uh, we have our own way of talking, of uh, drinking wine, of going out at night, having a, a aperitivo uh, a la seis or no sé qué. Well, uh, in the UK or in uh, in Japan, for instance, they won't have an aperitivo at, at, at six. They will be having dinner. So keep that in mind. Uh, when you ask for... Uh, uh, when you ask your, your Chinese contact to have uh, lunch with, uh, don't suggest an appointment at 2 p.m. Go with the noon option because that's exactly what they do. They don't uh, go for lunch at uh, 2 or 3. So this is, of course, a little story, but keep that in mind. And that goes, again, with the adapt. Make sure that... Uh, you are uh, aware of the differences. When you give your, your, cred your business card to, um, to a Japanese, for instance, make sure you do it the proper way, holding it in two hands and bending. That's the way they do. If you don't do that, they will know that you're probably not aware of the, of the tradition. But still, if you do that, it means that uh, you're aware, you pay attention, and you respect their traditions. So, yeah, good point for you. Don't imitate. Um, during your career, you will be uh, surrounded by people. Uh, I hope for you, otherwise I'll get worried. Uh, you will have friends, you will have competitors, you will have uh, uh, partners, and so on. Uh, Everyone has uh, his or her uh, own style. Uh, of course, you can get tips from uh, one person or the other. The way he introduces himself, the way he pitches something, uh, a good line, a good introduction. Uh, you can get in inspired, uh, but don't imitate, because at the end of the day, it's you. It's your relationship with the other, with the broadcaster. So you can get inspired, but don't imitate, because at some point it will, it, it won't um, uh, sound real, uh, which uh, uh, is not a, a, good, uh, a good way at all. Um, and connect with the competition. That sounds very weird. Uh, but again, there are a lot of people out there doing the same uh, job as you. Uh, be nice with them, talk to them, become friends maybe with uh, some of them um, because they, uh, they can be helpful. Uh, at the end of the day, uh, if you need an information on 
a broadcaster on uh, the price uh, a channel can uh, can uh, uh, put on the table on the reliability of this new OTT platform in China. You've never dealt with it, but you've read in the press because you're connected to the international market. So you've read in the press that that uh, competitor um, uh, of yours signed a deal with the new uh, platform in China. Uh, so what are you gonna do to check if they are reliable, if they're gonna pay for your program, if they don't, uh, they won't go with a piracy or so on and so on? Well, you give your competitor a call and you ask him, I've read in the press that you've closed a deal with that company. Uh, I'm in talks with them. I just wanted to see if you're happy with the relationship you've created. Are they uh, trustful? Did they pay you? Blah, blah, blah. That's what people do in our business. Um, because as you can uh, easily see uh, when you're grown-ups, it's a very, very, very small world. Uh, that takes me to my last don't, don't gossip. Don't talk badly about anybody, unless it's your best friend. Why? Because it's such a small world that everyone that is at one uh, position one day is on the other one uh, the other day. Uh, what do I mean by that? It, uh, that uh, even inside your, your company or um, your secretary or your assistant today can become your boss in 10 years. So you'd better treat her well because in 10 years, if you've not been nice to her when she was a junior, she can be very, very mean to you. That applies to everyone. Um, I was a little uh, salesperson uh, selling uh, the Muppet Show in Latin America 18 years ago. That's how I started. Then I, become, I became a small uh, a buyer for Disney. Then I become a bigger uh, buyer for, for M6. Then I, I became uh, the head of, uh, of uh, M6 uh, uh, Kids Block. And now I'm back on uh, the sales side. You'd better be nice with people along the way. Uh, never uh, uh, and n never und underestimate anybody, uh, even if it's an intern, never uh, even if it's a, a junior, because that person can can grow faster than you or have other opportunities and and become, if not your your boss, your client or your potential uh, partner. Uh, so. Always uh, uh, be nice and avoid, uh, avoid uh, gossiping because you never know who you're talking to. If you're sharing a bad experience with uh, someone, you may learn at the end of the confidence that uh, it was that person's um, husband or cousin or whatever. Believe me, it happens a lot. So this sounds uh, stupid, but uh, I've, I've seen so many stories uh, over the past 18 years that uh, uh, this would be a true advice. So don't gossip or be very, very careful about what you say about people. But most importantly, say to mismo. Um, because again, at the end of the day, it's all about relationship. It's all about you uh, and the other one on the other side of the table. So you'd better be yourself, otherwise you will have a very, very bad moment that can stay long if you wanna do some business in the industry and if that's the job of your dreams, uh, you're gonna spend uh, some decades there, so you'd better uh, stay yourself. Uh, it's gonna be easier for you. And... Podeu aplaudir. Gracias. Sí.